Sure, I'll try it. Yeah. It's ready. pretty good run up there at the top. We we gave it up too soon though. Oh. Like we want to lug it down. A lot more than that. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd hold it full throttle and watch that break and quit when it stops. Hold on a second. We gotta look at it. I can just lug it, lug it clear down until there's nothing left. Yeah, just hold it full throttle until that brake stops and then give it up because after that you're just burning the clutch on the chainsaw, right? Okay. G eight, eight, eight. Three. Yeah. We'll call this run two because that's all we ever did. need to fix it because well, let's look and see you think our barometric pressure is still in the same place so can you call the airport and they'll always tell you what the oh yeah just call ADIS it always tells it but that's telling you at sea level not here you know what I mean because <clears throat> when you set your altimeter on an airplane you're setting at four sea level you might be going up or down from the airport you're at so you're setting what it is at your airport, right? So that the altimeter will be accurate. But the barometric pressure is not what they're telling you it is. They're telling you at sea level, okay? Mm. So um, in Mountain Green, I had it all figured out. All you had to do is call down to the airport, subtract 4.54, and you were right on, you know, from the barometric pressure, but anyway. What was your elevation there versus here? 5,000 feet. This is about 40, 4,500. A little bit lower. Yep, we're a little bit lower. Okay, the barometric pressure has come down barely. We were at 25,999. Now we're at 20, or at 982. So we should be sub, we should be subtracting it to get our numbers just right, right? So tell me what it is. You got your phone? Get your calculator out. Calculate this. Yeah, we got to do our horsepower ratings too. Apparently. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so we got 25.999 minus 18.5. What is it? 7.499. 7 7.499. Okay, now what I want you to do is subtract that, 7.499, from 25.982. 18.5. Comparison should be legit, right? Well, it's legit. We can make it anyway. Oh, that's awesome. Nope. Well, we didn't quite do as good as we did last time. <clears throat> We're at 13.35 this time. 13.799. You know? Okay. You better do the next run. We also had 1124 at 12,150. 12, yeah, I want to see it get some more horsepower. Um, but one thing Harvey told me is, I don't ever put a ton of compression in these saws. He said, I might have deck it a little bit, you know. He said, because you just plain can't start the dirty box. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> okay, I think we'll let you run one. You want me to run, make one run? Yep, you make one run. Let's see if you can do, make it better. We only have 14 horsepower. You want to hit 14? We'll but hit you four. hit 14 once already with the other pipe. I know, we got to hit 14 with this pipe. Okay. Let's give it a few minutes, let the engine cool, because right? that'll be a secret. Honda and Kawasaki have both gone to liquid-cooled engines. When? 
86. You got to go? No, no, I just got, I got that wrong. Anyway, um, they, they both come out with wood, wood cooled engines, and so Yamaha says, well, we want a presence on the track. And so they built the WR500. They had the YZ490, but they built the W500 just right at the very end. And uh, <laughs> they, they used all the tricks in the book, you know. And they only built a thousand of them. That's how many you had to build to compete in the classes stock, right? And so they had some really good riders and they put them on and stuff. Just didn't turn out as shiny as it should have. And so they only ever built those thousand bikes. <laughs> That's all they did. And that was free air? It was free air. So they only ever built those thousand bikes. And, you know, and so these guys were kind of collected them up because they're rare and stuff. But if you're going to do a horsepower shootout with a CR500, you're going to lose. <laughs> That's all especially the longer you ride. Yeah, especially. Yeah, the yeah. hotter you. If you want to put some dry so, ice yeah. on the motor. <clears throat> do you want a liquid cool chainsaw? Probably not. <laughs> so heavy? <laughs> you got to pack that thing around. Pack that know? thing around, yeah. a little antifreeze in there, circulating, keep it cool. Yeah. That's just so much more weight. We, so, could, run, we could run them on alcohol, though. A lot of people do. You know how we used to tune our alcohol bikes, don't you? We'd, we'd adjust the carburetor until the, until the gurgling was kind of minimized, right? Then we'd make a run up the mountain, because they always clean out on alcohol. Just hold it full throttle and start shifting gears. It always cleans out. <laughs> when, you get to, when you get to the top of the mountain, you reach down and put your hand on the cylinder. If you can hold your hand right on it, it's still a little too rich. If, it's, if you can't just touch it and you have to pull it right away, it's too lean. So it should be hot, but not hot enough to burn you or anything. So Holy cow. So that was... <laughs> An alcohol burner, maybe. Yeah. And what does it do for power? How much of a gain? About 10 to 15%. Because you can run your compression quite a bit higher because it burns slow, you know. Yeah, about 12 or 15%. And yeah, on these, it should make a significant difference because I guarantee you, it'll make a big, serious cut. Reach over and touch the cylinder, and it'll be just warm, you know? It won't even be that hot. So, wow. However, if it eats a tank of gas making a pass, it would eat two tanks of alcohol. <laughs> I'm sure that's not cheap. Everything else is expensive. Five years out. What, I wonder what octane rating is that? Was that even considered at? I don't have any idea. If do they even rate alcohol at an octane rating? You know, I don't. I don't think so. I it's it's in a league of its there own. There has to be somewhere where they made a comparison, but because you know you can test it. At least you can test the motor method, right? For octane. Mm -hmm. So they probably could. You could probably find a comparison somewhere to this search. Oh yeah. That's cool. Pipe number three. Hello. Oh. Pipe two, we have fourteen horsepower. Let's see if pipe three can do it. It just wasn't pretty how it did it at the end. This has more horsepower the whole way up. Okay, I think it's your turn for this one. Seconds. I'll make some notes here. Yeah. See what the number is on the dyno.
They changed it. The Holtz Forma. <laughs> the Holtz Forma. Yeah, the Holtz Forma. G888. They're happy about it, I guess. I guess so. What does it say on it? Like third generation machinery or something? Yep. <laughs> what were the first two generations? <laughs> exactly. That's what I was going to say. I don't even want to ask. Hacksaw. Electric tools. I don't know either. Now see it's dropped again. We're at 25.978. It's changing on us. It was raining a little bit when we came up. We got I did it worse than you, not better. Twelve point seven two at fourteen thousand fifty. Yeah, I'd say go cut it with it in the wood. You know what? Yeah, I did worse. Try some pipes. What, um, okay, pipe number two, what was our peak power? I think well, we hit 14 with that one, didn't we? 12.4. We did hit 14 at one point. But like I said, we might be a, be a little too jerky on the brake and snapping the, the torque. So we eventually called it, I think we called it 12.04, didn't we? You want to write it all down for sure? Well, I, I just I don't care. I just need to write it down so people online understand what we've been doing. Okay. We want to hit the peak. We didn't even say, hey, we hit 14 horsepower, but it peaked out at the end and wasn't very strong through the mid-range. I can say that. It's fine. Maybe I will. But pipe number three... Is that pipe number three was, was, was like the one we liked the most, just because the steady, it, it nice pulled steady and had more power at lower RPMs. Okay, you're going to write, on pipe two, you're going to write 12.04 horsepower at 11,650 RPM. Okay. Now you want to know pipe one, right? No pipe three. You already know pipe one. Yep, we already know pipe one. We want pipe three. Which run do you think was the best? You tell me. Probably one of the ones you did. The first one you did, probably. No, I don't really think so. Let's see what we got. We'll try two. So, this is where we ended up. This pipe here is the winner. This is pipe number three. Pipe three is the winner. One. Pipe two. This is where. You can tell kind of, that's what we did today. So, not too bad, kind of fun. We're still uh, making improvements, more R&D. Like I said, this just takes a lot of time. And we're also gonna work on improving the dyno a little bit. Some of our results are a little scat, you know, jumpy. And so, we spoke to Land and Sea dyno people and they've uh, told us what we need to do, so. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy this stuff, you uh, crazy chainsaw enthusiasts. Let let that bounce around. 
in between the void, the giant void in between your ears that we hit 14 horsepower today on our best run. So now we're gonna, we need to find some porting people. Who out there, who were, who were the top porting, porting guys or who can make the, the holds forma G88 run. I don't have a real one. They were worth quite a bit of money. So I sold my real one. Um, but we definitely be interested in we know what we can get now stock with a pipe now We'd like to see porting with a pipe and you know get even you know 18 that'd be sweet <laughs> If you hit 20 horsepower. Oh, that'd be epic Anyway, just uh, food for thought. So if anybody out there wants to attempt porting one Where maybe we can work something out. Thanks for watching guys. See ya